This coin right here is both, and at the very same time, a perfect metaphor for life. But at the same time, it's the absolute worst metaphor for life in the world. Now let me explain. And the two concepts that I'm about to share in this video are two, two of some of the most powerful concepts I've learned about after reading hundreds of books, literally over a hundred books, and many thousands of hours of research. Now, how is this coin a terrible way of viewing life? Well, today, three separate events happened that prompted me to make this video. The first one was I was in a group of friends and we were talking about relationships and how serious those of the people in the group who were in a relationship were about their relationship. And there was one girl who was obviously not very serious about their relationship and when questioning came up and prompted her, she then replied by saying, well, most people our age aren't going to be together for the long run. 80% of people our age break up. And anyway, over 40% of people that get married divorce anyway, so why would I be serious about my relationship? That was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was when I met someone and told them that I was going to be an entrepreneur, they said, oh, it's a risky route. Nine out of 10 businesses fail. That was one of the first things he said to me. Nine out of 10 businesses fail. The third thing that happened was again, we were in a group and there was a couple people that were smoking. And when someone brought up a statistic, and I can't remember the exact number, but they said something like, for every cigarette you smoke, you're increasing your likelihood of getting lung cancer by 1%. So if you smoke 10 cigarettes, it increases by 10%. I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was something along those lines. And one of the people that was smoking replied by saying, yeah, well, over 40% of the population get cancer anyway. So what's the point in trying to avoid getting cancer? Because chances are 40% of the population are going to get cancer anyway. Three, these three situations... The relationship, the business, the cancer, the 40% of relationships or 40% of marriages fail and 9 out of 10 businesses fail and 40% of people get cancer. These all have something very significant and it's the exact opposite of this coin. Because those three people and society everywhere, I see the same trend in society, they view life as a statistic. They think, yeah, nine out of 10 businesses are gonna fail. Yeah, my divorce is probably, my marriage is probably gonna end in a divorce. Yeah, there's a chance that I'm gonna get cancer. But what they fail to understand is that you have a control over that outcome. So yes, 40% of marriages end in divorce, but that isn't to say that your relationship has a 40% chance of ending in a divorce. They're different. Because in one, we're taking the average of the whole population, and in the other, we're taking you and your one situation, but you have control over that one situation. You can do things to increase the likelihood of your marriage surviving. Just how you can increase things that you can do to, to get your business to not be one of the nine out of 10. You influence your relationship, you influence your business and you influence the likelihood of you getting cancer. Again, just because four out of 10 people are going to get cancer does not mean that you have a four out of 10 chance of getting cancer. You can influence that statistic and greatly reduce it through good life choices. And this puts you in the driver's seat of your life. This puts the control back in your hand. Because if you're saying, oh, 40% of relationships are, or 40% of marriages are going to end in divorce, you're putting the control into someone else's view. You are putting the control outside of yourself. And when you do that, straight away, you could tell from her attitude, she wasn't willing to work on her relationship because she thought that it was going to end. That is a devastating thing to do. And if you're never going to start a business because nine out of 10 businesses fail, that is absolutely shooting yourself in the foot. And if you're going to continue smoking because you think that, oh, chances are I'm going to get cancer anyway, then that is a devastating life decision. And I worry when I talk about the dichotomy of control, which is a concept in the philosophy of stoicism, which states that there are some things within our control and there are other things without our control. I worry that people are using the dichotomy of control as an excuse to not live their life to their fullest. Because when things go wrong or they don't get what they want, they now have an excuse to blame the dichotomy of control. They say, oh yeah, well, I didn't have full control over that. And sometimes that's just what nature gives to me. Don't do this. Instead, take control of what you can control. Do that to the best. And when you do that, chances are you will get the outcome that you want. Now, 
That is how this coin is a dreadful metaphor for life. But how is it a good metaphor for life? Well, in 1984, the book and the film, there's a quote that really stuck out to me. And before I get to the quote, there was actually someone and his only job. And let me go back one more time. If you don't know what the 1984 is, put, put simply, it was a prediction up into the future of what life would be like in 1984. Obviously, it was written before then. And they said there was going to be this huge authoritarian government that was going to control all of the people. And in that government, there was one person and his job was to rewrite history. He was going and he was changing the history books, rewrite, rewriting them in a way that supported the government's uh, propaganda, was turning history into propaganda for the government, rewriting it in a way that supports their beliefs. And there's a quote in that film that goes like this, he who controls the present controls the past, and he who controls the past controls the future. And in the example given in the movie, there was someone that was rewriting history. So they controlled the present, they were rewriting the past, and that was affecting the future. But what I think George Orwell was meaning when he wrote the book 1984, what he was meaning by this quote was that that person is you, because you control your present, which means that you can rewrite your past, which will affect your future. See, most people in the way society views us and our identity is static. People and society around us say we are this person and we do this because we fill out forms. We say, what's your age? What's your gender? Here's a picture of you. That is your identity. And that is all reinforcing the idea that our identity is static. But in reality, our identity is simply a group, a collection of beliefs about our past. We assume and we build up our identity on the past. If you procrastinate every single day, you are now a procrastinator. That's how you view yourself. If you wake up late every single day, you are not a morning person. That's how you view yourself. The way you view yourself is simply built up beliefs about your past. If someone says you're ugly, that's now how you view yourself. Chances are, or if lots of people tell you you're ugly, that's how you view yourself. The way you view yourself is simply an accumulation of all of the things that have happened in your past. But you have complete control over how you view your past. You can control your mind and choose what it dwells on in the past. And if you choose to dwell on the things that are going to push you forwards in the past, you choose to remember and be grateful for the things that you did well in the past. Instead of the time that you messed up, instead of the times you failed, instead of the embarrassing thing that you said, if instead of viewing all of those negative things, you can look back into your past and remember all of the positive things, then that is going to be how you influence your future. You control your present. You can influence how you view your past. And when you change how you view your past, that is how you're going to change your future. These are two different concepts. Oh, wait, no. How does this relate to the coin? Well, like this saying goes, you control your present, you can control your past, which will control your future, which means that your past doesn't have to mean your future. Just because you've had a negative past, bad things have happened to you in your past, you've been poor in your past, you've been unhealthy in your past, you've had bad habits in your past, does not mean that that is going to happen to you in the future, because like I've just explained to you, you can influence your future by rearranging your past. How is that, what's that got to do with a coin? Well, remember, a coin is always independent of the event that's happened previously. So if I said to you that I flipped this coin and five times in a row it's landed heads, what are the, what's it gonna land on next? Well, some people say, well, it should land on tails next, but that is completely false because the, the event of flipping a coin is completely independent from its past. The, this flip of the coin was not dependent on the previous flips of the coin, just like in life. Whatever happened in your past does not affect or does not have to affect what happens in your future. And these are two very empowering beliefs. Now, if you've enjoyed this, then make sure you give it a like. Let me know down in the comments which one you preferred out of these two, uh, two ideas, the first one or the second one. Let me know down in the comments. And if you're new or anything, then make sure you click the subscribe button to get more empowering ideas just like this one.